but we see a decline in fatherhood in today's culture. And I believe we gotta turn the tide and it's our responsibility to do that. Right here in this place, in this moment, there are people who would say, the moment you said fatherhood, I checked out. I'm just gonna be honest with you, I had a poor model. My, I never even knew my dad. My dad abandoned our family. Or I knew the man, but he was absent. He was only a body. He was not, he was not there, even though his physical body was there. I just, he just never talked to us. He never invested in us. Or, or some of you would say, I had a father. He was there, but he was abusive. He was abusive. He was a mean man. And so I carry that with me. And I understand that. And I get that. Um, but poor models doesn't mean the design is broke. Three virtues, three characteristics that God has put in every man, every male, it's in there. And he may never pass on his DNA, but he is still, it's still in there. And he will find a way to manifest these roles, either in a community or a church. Here we go. Matthew 1.20. But after he, Joseph, had considered this, and we're going to talk about what he considered, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Now, if you know the story, you know that, that they were betrothed to be married. Uh, Mary comes to Joseph and says, hey, I'm pregnant, but I'm pregnant with the, you know, with the Christ child, and it's from the Holy Spirit. And he's like, oh, okay. Um, let me pray about that. All right. And, and he, has, he has a dream, and the angel of the Lord comes to him and says that he should not be afraid, um, because men, let's be honest, we care about our reputation. Okay, I'll just let that out. Yep, we care about our reputation, uh, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So he's going to put his reputation, his rep in the community on the line. Let's keep going. It says, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. Who's going to give Jesus his name? Joseph. His name will be Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. His name has a meaning, and his father will give him this name, and when every child is born, the first piece of their identity that is not baked into their DNA is the name. Every one of my children, we had a name picked out. Some, some of them last minute, right? <laughs> uh, okay, that, that's good. And the nurse comes in, what's, what's his name? What's her name gonna be? All right, there we go, that's the name. The father gives the name. Let's keep going. So what happens? When Joseph woke up, when he woke up, when he came back to the real world, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, took Mary home at his, as his wife. Remember, he doesn't say a word. He listens, and he does what God tells him to do. Verse 25 says this, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. If you don't know what that means, come talk to me afterwards. And he, look at this, he gave him the name Jesus. He gave him the name. Joseph was responsibility. His responsibility as a father was to start to impart upon this child his identity. His identity. Why do we have an identity crisis in our culture today? Because we have a fatherhood crisis in our culture today. We need fathers to say, no. We need fathers to say, and yes. We need fathers to say, stop. And we need fathers to say, go. Because that's what fathers do. It's not ambiguous to fathers. We need mothers to say, let me think about it. Maybe. Why don't you come here and I'll hug you. We need fathers to say yes and no and stay and go. So write this down because this is one of the things, right? 
God gives fathers the influence to build up children's identities. It's already in there. It's in every child. I saw it this week in my granddaughter, Rinley. She's starting to stand up, and she's, 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 already, she's, she's crawling. She's got that down. She's a, she's a pro. She, she's standing up now, and she's going to start walking. And we all know this is exciting. And, she's gonna, and once she sort of stands up and she holds herself up, who is it that she calls out for? Yes, her dad, not her mom. Okay, her mom has been a part of her life, very intricate part of her life. In fact, when the first few months that a, a child is born, they can't differentiate themselves from their mother. They think their mother is them. And when dad walks in, it's like, oh, who is this person? Who is this strange and curious person? It's already in us. And yes, even if you had a broken model, there's something in you still today, striving, striving to say, dad, look, look what's going on in my life. And there's something complicated in that. Even if you never met the man, you still want to prove yourself to that man. It's in there. And it's in every father to have that influence. Men, I, I don't care who you are. I don't care how broken you think you are. I don't care how irredeemable you think you are. The world is watching you because they can't help it because you are a father or a father to be and God has made it that way and you can step into that or not. But I'm here, I'm here to tell you, if you're at this house, in this house, we're gonna call it out of you. We're gonna call it up. We're gonna lift you up when you don't think you can and we're gonna say, you're a father and come on, let's do this together. Because we need it, man. We need kids to know who they are, who they are in this world, and ultimately who they are in Jesus Christ. It is the, it's the masculine voice, it's the father's voice that says you have a name and you carry my frame. Mm, I'm gonna start rapping. <laughs> Woo! You're part of this house, and in this house this is who we are. We don't go out and buy new cars when we get a five cent hourly raise. We go buy a $300 car and we make it work. So let me help you clean up this foolishness and go get you the car that you can afford. Whew. Man. Mm. Let's keep going. Next dream. When they had gone, who is they? The Magi. We know the story. Many of you know the story. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. There was more than three, but, you know, the Christmas cards, it's three. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up. Mm, I think there's something in that, y'all. He woke up. The angel said, get up. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you for Herod, really bad dude, is going to search for the child to kill him. Over and over, Matthew gives a reference to Exodus and Moses and puts it on Jesus. He is Moses, he is Israel, he is the new, he is the better. It's really fascinating. Next, what does he say? It says, so he, Joseph, got up, took the child uh, and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. Look what it says next. This is, this is big where they stayed until the death of Herod, bad dude, dangerous guy. So he was fulfilled, Darth Vader, he, he was fulfilled with what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt, I called my son. Jesus had a destiny, he had a purpose. He was the anointed one of God and his earthly father was to protect him from danger. Was to protect him from danger. Now this is inside of all men. It's in there, it's in there because there is, a, there is a future husband and a future father inside of these men. And I want us to look at this because this is big. God gives fathers an instinct to protect children from potential dangers. It's in there, it's in there. It's, 
There's something inside of the instincts. If all of the stupid and the foolish stuff get out of the way of, and all the distractions and all the addictions and all the, the, the self-worship of a man gets out of the way, there is this thing inside of him that says, I am a protector. And I, and I think that's important that we understand that as we are here right now. And it says this, it says this. It says, after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. So he's in Egypt and now he's having another dream. And he says, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. Um, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. Verse 21, so he got up over and over. Get up, okay. Took the child and his mother and he went to the land of Israel. Verse 23, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. That's not random. So was fulfilled what was through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Here's what happens. We see that there's influence that a father has to place identity on that child. There is there's an instinct to protect that child from danger. And it's, in, and, and, and it's not just in our own children, it's even in a house, it's, it's in a spiritual house that we are responsible. There were about six or seven honeybees in my house this past week, and I don't know how they got in there, I don't know if somebody left the door open, I searched for wind, open windows, I searched everywhere, I, I couldn't find them, but they were in the house and they were buzzing around and, and it came my responsibility to kill these bees. At one point, I had to get a 12-foot ladder to get up on a ledge that was 14 feet above, and there was about maybe just, just enough for me to be on this ledge, and I'm looking down, and I'm thinking, if I fall down, I'm gonna break something or I'm gonna die. And right behind me is a window that may have been a jar, that may have been open that I'm trying to, and there's a couple bees uh, flying around. I yell down to my wife, throw me a shoe. She throws up a boot. I grab the boot. I start beating to death these bees. And then I thought to myself, this is what we do, isn't it? Right? This is what we do as fathers, as husbands, as grandfathers. When stuff gets in the house that doesn't belong there, it's our job to seek, to find, and destroy it. There's stuff getting in the house and it's our responsibility as fathers and future fathers to say, the devil is a lie, he will not have this house, and it's my responsibility to say, go to hell. Anybody with me? Come on. And you know where it starts? Starts with the man in the mirror, right? Starts with that guy, because that's where the enemy's going first. But I wanna say this at the very last, and then, and then we're gonna bring this home, and that is this. God gives fathers the insight to create a home and community for children to thrive in. It's already in there. There's something in you that says, hey, this is the town in which you're supposed to bring up. This is the church in which you're supposed to bring up these children for the next season. For Joseph, he was supposed to go to Nazareth. That, that, was, that was in the cards. And so he took Jesus, three-year-old Jesus, and, and, and for the next Several years of his life, he brought him up as a carpenter's son. And in John's gospel, chapter one and chapter six, two occasions, people referred to him as, oh, you're Jesus, the son of Joseph. They knew his dad. They knew his earthly father. So I just wanna bring that to us today, to application. What do we do with this? What do we do with this? Ask God to renew the fatherly influence, instinct, and insight in your life, regardless of your age or stage.